Well, good morning. Uh, We are doing something just a little bit different this morning. We're going to take a break from the book of Joshua. Uh, We will finish our Joshua series over the next couple of weeks. Uh, But this morning, we're doing something just a little different. So we're going to be in Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. If you have a Bible, you want to get on over there. Uh, We are also going to have our time of offering a little bit later in the service This morning. So if you have an offering to give, just hang on to that for a few minutes and we'll talk from Colossians 4, 5, and 6. I was remembering this week when I was in college, one summer I lived in a house near the AM campus with a group of other guys. And uh, it was kind of a cool tradition when I moved in that these guys had. We actually ate dinner together most nights, like a, like a family of college guys. And everybody sort of took a turn cooking the meal. And uh, one evening shortly after I moved in, uh, we had just chicken breasts, grilled chicken breasts for dinner with broccoli or something like that. And I personally, I like my food a little bit spicy. And so I asked one of the roommates, hey, do we have any Tabasco sauce or anything like that that I can put onto my chicken breast? And he said, well, I don't think so. You're welcome to look in the fridge. Somebody may have left something there. And so I went and looked in the fridge and I said, there's no, there's none in there. It's okay. And he said, well, we do have, we do have something that I think is kind of like Tabasco sauce. And so uh, he went to the fridge and he pulled out a little bottle that looked like this. Uh, Now, some of you know what this is. Some of you do not. Uh, It's called Dave's Insanity Sauce. Uh, The little uh, phrase at the top of the bottle says, the original hottest sauce in the universe. Now, I didn't know what this was, uh, but I said, okay, yeah, it looks like a hot sauce. And he goes, I think it might be a little bit spicier than Tabasco sauce. And I was like, man, you know, I can handle my spicy food. I mean, just, you know, I had this sort of spicy arrogance going on. And so... I grabbed it and uh, I thought, you know, I'm just going to put some of this on my chicken. And so I turned the bottle and it came out a little faster uh, than I expected. And it's a pretty thick sauce. It's thicker than Tabasco sauce. And so I put maybe a quarter size dollop on the top of my chicken breast. And then I spread it around over the top of this chicken and I began to eat. And the first bite or two was fantastic. Uh, it, It was a little bit spicy. I was like, no, he goes, is that too much? I go, no, it's great. It's good. It was around bite three that it began to hurt. Uh, I began to sweat and the, uh, just the, the spiciness of this sauce filled my mouth. And I don't know how to describe it, but it wasn't just my mouth. It was my entire head felt like it was on fire. My chest was constricting from the pain of this sauce. I was beginning to cry. And he's like, are you sure you're okay? I'm all red. I'm sweaty. I'm not kidding you. It took me about an hour and a half before I felt normal again. Uh, And what I learned about Dave's Insanity Sauce is that uh, what you're supposed to do with it, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, What you're supposed to do is take a drop of it and you place it in an entire pot of like chili, like a giant pot of chili. And it makes the whole thing spicy. It's so potent, it's concentrated capsaicin, which is the chemical from jalapenos and other peppers that make them spicy. They've concentrated it into something devastating and incredibly potent. (laughs) So that one little drop seasons an entire pot of soup or chili. Now, why do I share that? Because I realized on that day that there are some substances that are so powerful that you just need a little bit to transform the flavor of an entire meal, right? There are some substances that are so powerful, you just need a little bit to change everything. As we look throughout the scripture, what we see is that all, often the grace of God most uh, poignantly revealed, most perfectly revealed in the gospel. The grace of God is a substance that potent, so potent it's described like a seasoning that can flavor an entire world, an entire culture. And as you look through the scripture, what you see is it only takes a little bit, right? It only takes a few people living in keeping with the gospel of Jesus Christ to impact and change an entire community. So often the grace of God is described just like that as a seasoning or in 2 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, chapter five, Paul describes it also as like a fragrance. 
2 Corinthians 2, verses 15 to 16. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, an aroma from death to death. To the other, an aroma from life to life, right? So like a seasoning or like a fragrance. If you have ever had a particularly strong fragrance, a cologne or a perfume, sometimes you might walk by and there may be memories in your mind of somebody in your childhood or your youth who wore a fragrance and it was so powerful that every time you hear it or smell it, it triggers memories, right? Because a powerful fragrance, just a little bit, can change the smell of an entire room, an entire area. Similarly, the gospel is often described as a seasoning or a fragrance, that can change a culture, right? The early church understood this. And so as we read through the New Testament, as you read the book of Acts, it's really remarkable that from the lives of a few followers of Jesus, really just a handful of men and women who said, I wanna pursue Jesus Christ, from their lives within really just a couple of centuries, the entire world was transformed. They went from a few dozen followers of Jesus Christ to millions of followers of Jesus Christ because a few people said, we are gonna live and breathe and proclaim the grace of God. That's what we see in Colossians chapter four as we look at it this morning. Colossians chapter four, verses five and six. Let me read these verses. Paul says, conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of every opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person, right? In his closing instructions to this church at Colossae, Paul says, here's what I want you to do. I want your life and your speech and your actions to be seasoned with the grace of God so that as you move throughout the world and in their day as in our day, they were moving throughout a world amongst people who didn't believe in Jesus, who in some cases were hostile to Jesus. And he says, I want you to permeate your world with the grace of God, like salt is a seasoning on your food. All right, so the question we wanna ask for a few minutes this morning then is this question. How can we season our community and our world with the grace of Jesus? Now, this is, as you guys may know, this is the celebration Sunday for our Every Knee initiative that we started back in April after Easter. And as you remember, as we've walked through the Every Knee initiative, the thing that we've talked about is that our primary goal really is that all of us will learn the joy of giving all that we have and all that we are to Jesus, right? So the Every Knee initiative is not first and foremost about building a building for our congregation, although that's part of it. It's not first and foremost about raising the money for another church plant or another campus, although that's part of it. It's first and foremost about the men and women in this room and at our Anderson campus and our Southwest campus, moving out into the community and into the world and acting as seasoning for our community that we gather here, all right, the reason we are building a facility is because we want to have a place permanently for decades to come where we can gather, where we can be equipped, where we can worship together and then move out into the community and season it with the grace of God, right? And so in a few minutes, we're going to talk about uh, what God has done through you so far in the Every Knee initiative. But for a few minutes, what we wanna do is talk about how can we be this kind of seasoning? I'm gonna give some uh, biblical uh, ideas this morning and then our outreach pastor, Ryan Pale, is gonna come up for a few minutes and give us some very practical ideas for how we can season our community with grace. But here's what I wanna do. I wanna look at Colossians 4, 5, and 6. And I wanna pull out a couple of principles for how we can season our community with the grace of God. All right, the first principle is this. He says, seek opportunities to reflect Jesus. Seek opportunities to reflect Jesus. Again, verse five, conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Okay, literally when he says making the most of the opportunity, in the original language, this says redeeming the time, redeeming the time. That is, I'm gonna use my time to make the most of every opportunity so that when I go to work, When I walk around in my neighborhood, when I'm at my kid's school or their sporting events, wherever I am, I'm gonna make the most of my time. Here's what I think Paul is getting at. All of us 
use our time and our energy and our words for those things that matter to us, right? All of us do that. So for example, let me just, I just pulled an example sort of out of thin air. Some of you in this room, you are CrossFit people, right? We know it, right? We know it for a few reasons. Uh, When you walk in, we see you, you look better than the rest of us, right? You look like you could bench press all of us this morning. You are a walking advertisement for it. We also know it because we follow you on social media, right? So you post about it on social media. Here's the workout I did. Here's the record I broke. Here's how fast I ran. Here's how much I lifted, right? We know that. We know it also because we've been invited to CrossFit by you many times, right? Maybe we've come, maybe we haven't, but you're excited about it, right? You go five to 12 days a week, you work out. We know it, you love it. Now, now why, why do you talk about it? Why do you post about it? Why do you invite us? Because you believe in it, right? It's something that has transformed your life. And so you invest your time, your energy, and you even use your communication platforms to let us know about it because it matters. Right now, Paul would say, when your life has been transformed by the gospel, to live out the gospel, to say, I'm gonna devote my time and energy to knowing God's word, to worshiping Jesus Christ, to sharing the gospel, to telling people who Jesus is, that's not some form of manipulation. That is an overflow of the love that I have in my heart that God implanted there for Jesus Christ. And so Paul says, you make the most of every opportunity that when you go to work, when you go to school, when you move into your community, you say, I wanna use my time. I wanna redeem my time for the things of Jesus Christ so that we begin to ask questions like this. Who are the people that I influence? Who are the people that listen to me? Who are the people I know? Who are the people in my sphere of influence at work, in my neighborhood, in my family? How can I use my time? and my energy, and my talents, and my money, so those men and women can hear the good news that Jesus Christ died for our sin and rose again so we can have life because my life has been transformed. I wanna be a walking advertisement for Jesus Christ. Not primarily for Grace Bible Church or some organization, but for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, risen from the dead. So Paul says we make the most of every opportunity Everything I have belongs to Jesus Christ. And so I want to give all I have to his service. So Paul says, make the most of your time. Conduct yourself with wisdom toward outsiders. We seek opportunities to reflect him. Secondly, we carry God's grace into every interaction. Look at verse six again. He says, let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. He says, look, you season your speech with grace. Uh, My wife just recently bought new salt and pepper shakers for our kitchen table. And uh, we have to be careful with them because the holes in the cap are slightly larger than our old salt and pepper shakers. And so if you turn that salt and pepper shaker too far, you're gonna get a pile of salt on your eggs or on your food. And we have one child, uh, I won't name which one, but this particular child loves salt. And so we remind him or her on a regular basis, look, you don't have to put a pile of salt in order to season your breakfast. It just, you just need a little bit, right? Just turn it a little bit and just put a little bit of salt so you don't end up with coronary disease when you're 12, right? <laughs> it just takes a little to season the whole meal. Again, the early church understood it only takes a few men and women who say, I want my speech and my life to be seasoned with grace, that we say, because Jesus Christ lavished God's grace on me, then when I go to a restaurant, when I go to work, when I go to school, when I interact with my neighbors, I wanna be seasoned with kindness and with love and with truthfulness and integrity because that reflects my savior. And the reality is that one or two people who decide in my sphere of influence, I wanna reflect Jesus and I'm gonna season my speech and my life with grace can have a powerful impact on the lives around them. 
And so Paul says, you season every interaction with the grace of God. We live in a very violent world, a suspicious world, a divided world, where I think that the grace of God stands out. It doesn't take much to season a culture for Jesus Christ. Let me just share one recent illustration that I ran across. This is a local illustration. So some of you, perhaps you shop at the HEB that's just over here. I don't know if I pointed the right way. My sense of direction is terrible, but somewhere around here, um, there's an HEB. And uh, there was an article in the Eagle, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago about the store director. His name is Charles. Some of you know the store director Charles, because you've interacted with him. He gives gifts to your kids. He smiles at you. He says hello when you walk in. So there's, there's this article and the title, Faith, Family, and Customer Service. And I began to read this article, right? And, and he, he says this, he, he talks about his faith in Christ. He says, when you're in Christ and you say, God, here I am, use me, you gotta be ready. He says, because he'll put things and people in your path to fill that need that he needs. And they asked him in this article, he says, you go out of your way to help people in the store, was that something that came naturally for you? And here's part of his answer. He says, I'm a spiritual guy. I truly love God. If I do what I'm supposed to do to live for him and be that example, then my ultimate job is to show people that type of love all the time. On my way to work, I pray like, God, what is it you're gonna have for me today? Who are you gonna put in my path? Because you never know when there's gonna be someone who may be dealing with some stuff that your smile or your hug or your touch may help them. He says, because God has transformed my life, even in an ordinary job, at an ordinary store, one person can season the world with the grace of God. And so we carry God's grace into every interaction, right? That's our hope. That's our goal. That again is why we've been engaged in the Every Knee Initiative, it's why we exist as a church, right? We wanna be like that Dave's Insanity Sauce, except not to hurt people. <laughs> to bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's why we exist. That's why we're moving forward. And so our prayer for each of us is we would be those type of people. So Ryan Pale is gonna come up now for a few minutes and he's gonna share some very specific opportunities we have as a church to season our community and our world with the grace of God. Thanks, Matt. Hi, my name is Ryan, and uh, I'm a CrossFit dropout. Uh, so that's my walking advertisement. Excellent. Glad to be known by that. Uh, okay, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here specifically on this Sunday. Uh, I think about as we celebrate what the Lord has done through the Every Knee Initiative and what he's going to do as we continue in the initiative, uh, I, I, I just think about um, how powerful it is that we um, have a chance to take part in what the Lord uh, is doing. Uh, and so there's some, some really neat things that the Lord uh, has called us into. Uh, and so at the end of the day, uh, we exist to help people find and follow Jesus. Like when we think about the bottom line of the Every Knee Initiative, we wanna make sure that every interaction that we have with our neighbor, with people across the world and everything in between is gonna to be toward that end, that we help people find and follow Jesus. I think about, um, I think about the letter of Ephesians. You know, you have the whole first uh, chapter, uh, chapter one and then halfway into two. Uh, where Paul is saying, church at Ephesus, this is your identity in Christ. You have been given something powerful as adopted sons and daughters of Christ. This thing is huge. It's gonna change everything about who you are and the way that you see the world. You've been given gifts to share uh, with the world. You've been given every spiritual blessing. The resurrection power resides in you. And so he lays this beautiful foundation for the believers in Ephesus. And, and then right around uh, uh, chapter two, verse 10 and 11, he says, all right, now get to work. Let's get to work. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do amazing things. And then he launches into a radical life of discipleship, what it looks like to extend the love of Christ uh, to those around you within the church and then outside of the church. And so we, in many ways, we kind of stand in a similar place. We're kind of right in between verses 10 and 11 at, here at Grace Bible Church. We've laid out through the Every Knee Initiative, hey, this is what we're about. These are the things that we do. This is what we're gonna really rally behind. This is our unifying vision 
okay, let's celebrate it and now let's get to work. And so a lot of what I'm gonna talk about, and we're gonna lay out a lot of opportunities this morning in the next few slides, uh, but the whole premise is, okay, this is, this is amazing. God has given us a calling. Okay, okay now let's, let's get to work uh, as we help other people find and follow Jesus. So a few different things that uh, I've loved about the initiative. Uh, as I've been meditating on the, the, the sermon series that we did, uh, one is that it actually uh, it gives us a, a clear vision for unity. And here's what I mean by that. If you were to ask the average person why they attend Grace Bible Church, whether it's Creekside or Southwood or Anderson, if you ask the average person why you attend Grace Bible Church, and, and, and I would ask you, the, there's a lot of answers that people would give. Oh, my, friends, my friends go there. I've been there forever. Uh, it's closest to me. There's a lot of answers. But I would say the overwhelming response to that question would be, because it's got great sound biblical teaching. We have amazing teachers in our pulpits at all three campuses all the time. The, the problem with being known just for that is that it only actually speaks to a, a small handful of people, the, the Bible teachers. You know, when we think about uh, what we love about Grace Bible Church, that strong biblical teaching, it, it actually doesn't say, that concept, that ethic doesn't say anything about the rest of us and our transformation, the fact that not just, we're not supposed to just know stuff, but we're actually supposed to be transformed by it. So our goal this morning, as, as I lay out some of these options, is that we would, uh, if somebody asks you, why do you love Grace Bible Church? I would hope that you would say, because it's got strong biblical teaching and, and I am encouraged and equipped and, um, and challenged to go out and to be different because of the strong biblical teaching that I receive. So we're united in our vision. Another one, though, is it actually gives us a, a vision for implementation. So as we think about how do we help people find and follow Jesus, there are thousands of ways that we could do this. And we, and we could be a church that chases after every great idea in the world. And, and frankly, that's really tempting. There are a lot of really good ideas, and we can be scattered to where we don't have, a, in a sense, we don't have a grounding principle. And so what I've loved about the Every Knee Initiative is it's given us parameters uh, uh, through which we we view what our outreach is going to look like. So we, our parameters are, how do we serve the everyday um, work of the church? Or how do we serve every neighbor? How do, as Bryan and College Station and the surrounding areas continues to grow, how do we make sure that we are impacting the community? How do we give everybody in this area the opportunity to respond to the message of Christ and the gospel through our words and through our actions? And how do we, um, how do we celebrate um, everybody around the world? Around the world. How do we equip y'all to go around the world and be a part of planting churches all over the place? So what I'm going to do is this morning, I'm focusing on just two of those. We're going to focus on first every neighbor, uh, how do we equip every neighbor, everybody in our community to hear and respond to the gospel of Christ? I'm going to let y'all know we have one day, uh, June 16th. Not that that's the only day that you can serve and love other people. You don't get a pass for that. Uh, you're supposed to do that for two days out of the year. Um, <laughs> But on June 16th of this year, we just want to give you a little bit of a nudge. Just for those of us who are sitting there and like uh, thinking, gosh, I'd love to do something, but you know, my kids are involved in this. I travel a lot. Um, I'm really busy. I'm really tired. My work is demanding. We, we all have these uh, excuses that kind of keep us out of the game. So June 16th is meant to just be a nudge to get us walking forward. So this is going to happen in a couple of different ways. First is we're going to encourage, we've mentioned this in the past, we're going to encourage you all to have block parties. Now, uh, that word parties can be really overwhelming. It can be, it can be really exciting for some people, and it can be really overwhelming for some people. So here's what I mean by that. Uh, would you be willing on June 16th to just kind of capture the idea that the Lord has placed you in your home, in your apartment for a specific reason? And that he's placed your neighbors right next to you because they need an encounter with you. They need to know you and they need to know what you're about. It is a calling to the person right next to you. Would you please consider that? on June 16th, just to have that little nudge. So this can be everything from, hey, I'm, I'm doing a themed splash party. We're gonna have slides all over our backyard. Or it can be, I'm gonna walk next door and invite my neighbors to come to my house and have some wine and cheese uh, and everything in between. 
So would you please consider uh, doing that? I, th I think one of the coolest things, one of the coolest stories I've heard is that uh, one of our, uh, one of the people here at Creekside, uh, just they had the opportunity to, to, to meet their neighbors. They, a few years ago, was, uh, the Lecklers said, hey, we're gonna do a backyard Bible club uh, at our house. And it was a hit. They had a great time, but a lot of their neighbors are international students. And so it provided just an easy way for them to invite international students or internationals to come to their house and to build a relationship with them. But they didn't end there because the goal wasn't just about that day. The goal was to foster a relationship that they have been able to continue to build. Another thing, so if you're sitting there and you're like, okay, I can, uh, I, you know, I know my neighbors really well or my neighbors are reclusive and don't wanna have anything to do with me. Uh, what, what else can I do? Or I, I like to swing a hammer. Or I just like to get involved in, in, in anything. Uh, there's a couple of other opportunities. We have these amazing partnerships with nonprofits in town. They are doing work. Uh, They're doing gospel work throughout our community in ways that Grace Bible Church just doesn't. We don't know how to do it. And so we link up with them and we figure out how can we support you and what you're doing. One of them, uh, one of the agencies that we support is Hope Pregnancy Center. This is crisis pregnancy. This is advocating for the unborn, but they're not just doing it through legislation and through verbally yelling or getting into arguments or disputes. They're actually walking along Side, these moms who are in crisis. And so what they do is they have a mom uh, um, that's in kind of a crisis situation come into their office and they sit beside her and they pray with her and they share the gospel with her and they give her a sonogram so that she can hear the life-giving heartbeat uh, that's inside of her. And when she feels helpless and hopeless, they give her resources, everything from diapers to getting her connected with other agencies that it can come alongside of her. So what I would love for you to do, Creekside, is for us to help Hope Pregnancy Center out on Friday, June 15th, um, we're going to help them with a garage sale. They're doing a garage sale on June 16th, but on Friday, what we're gonna ask people to do is to go out there during business hours and help them move stuff from their attic into their main space where they're gonna have the garage sale. So they need helpers during that time, during business hours. And then the next day on Saturday, uh, they need help just with people running the garage sale. For those of you who have families, this would be a great opportunity to bring your kids, to help uh, your kids serve, serve alongside you, see you serving. Uh, and so we would love for your kids to come and be a part of it, provided they're more helpful than distracting. So. Uh, we would like to invite you to, uh, to do that. That's gonna be on Friday, June 15th, and then Saturday, June 16th. The next one is uh, SOS. Perhaps some of you have heard of uh, Save Our Streets Ministries. It's, a, it's an amazing organization. What uh, their founder and his uh, right-hand woman do is they go into gangs in Bryan and College Station, mainly Bryan, and they bust up the gangs. He'll walk right in the middle of their gathering and he'll talk to them about Jesus. The dude's been a part of some revival going on in the, uh, on the streets of Bryan and for years in ways that uh, I don't know if anybody in here could do. Uh, and so we wanna come alongside what he's doing. So they just, uh, through the generosity of Stylecraft, uh, Stylecraft built them a men's home. So men who have been struggling with substance abuse now have the opportunity to withdraw from their community and to be with other people who have similar struggles. And they go through a process and they get employment uh, and they uh, grow in their faith. They do Bible studies together. So at this men's home though, they, they need a fence, a privacy fence. Uh, I'm sure many of us in here have been a part of building a privacy fence. So on June 16th, I would like to invite uh, any of you uh, here in Creekside uh, to come with me and to, uh, and to help. We're, we're dig digging holes. We're filling them with a post and with concrete. And that would be a huge service to them to empower them to do the amazing work that they're already doing. So please come with me. Uh, okay, so you're sitting there saying, oh my gosh, Ryan, everything that you're saying, I wanna do it all. I know that that's what you're thinking. So what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna take out your phone. So go ahead, it's totally fine. You can do this, take out your phones and hold them up, nobody's moving, so that did backfired. So what you can do is you can take out your phone and you can actually take a picture of this or you can just go to Grace's website and there's a, there's a little banner on there and you click Grace for the City. And if you wanna know how to get involved, go there. And I'll be honest, if you spend the next three minutes Doing this, it's a big win in my book. Even if you zone out with what I'm saying up here, it would be a big win. So uh, I would encourage you to do that. And those, it just lists out the various opportunities that we have to serve. The next one though, we mentioned, uh, so that was every neighbor. Now I wanna talk to you all about every nation. 
So we want for Grace Bible Church to be known as a church that sends people to the nations. We want to equip you to be disciple makers, not just to disciple others, but to make disciple makers. And we want you to have, think about the whole world as you're doing so. We want everybody in here to have the moment where they say, would I serve overseas? Would I, and if not, would I be a part of empowering somebody and sending somebody else to go overseas? So we want you to have that moment when you really put that before the Lord. But um, we are we have a view toward planting churches in other nations. Grace Bible Church has in some form or another been a part of planting churches all over the world, thousands of churches, depending on kind of how you view churches, as uh, Guff likes to say. But also, um, uh, we just want to give you opportunities to go international. Uh, you know, last summer we got to take a trip to Greece, uh, a lot of us from Creekside, and it was uh, life-changing. It was transformative in so many ways, but we want all of us to have that opportunity. So to do that, we want to equip you so a few ways that we do this is uh, we offer the Awaken class in the fall semester. For those of you who um, are just interested to find out about what God is doing among the nations, we'd like to invite you to take this. It's, I say course, it's, you get to hear from amazing missionaries and you get to hear about how they engage the nations. They would go into different uh, tribes and tongues and nations and they would uh, learn the language and uh, learn how to share the gospel with them. So I'd encourage you to sign up for one of those classes. The perspectives is, uh, is that, but it's a little bit more expansive I think most of our staff at Grace has taken the perspectives course and, it's, uh, and it, it changes everything, changes your worldview. Uh, we would encourage you to sign up for our mission trips, short-term and midterm. And, and, and for y'all, this summer, uh, the teams uh, either have been sent or we're sending them in a couple of weeks. Would you just pray for, um, for our missionaries? Would you pray for our short-term trips and ask the Lord how you might support what they're doing? And then finally, we wanna resource you with, uh, with getting to work with international students through our GO groups. You're gonna learn how to engage people cross-culturally. And, uh, and the GO groups are a great opportunity to do that. So again, you're sitting there and you're saying, oh my gosh, Ryan, everything that you're saying is right on. You're speaking right to me. What do I do with these? Well, um, just you can take out a picture. You can leave your phone in your pocket and uh, take a picture. So go to this website right here, the bit.ly. And uh, what we do is uh, you're going to go to that and you're going to uh, just fill out a tiny questionnaire. Hey, I'm interested in cross-cultural ministry, or I'm, I'm interested in learning more about the nations or whatever the questionnaire is. We, we're just, we want to get some information for you so we can, we can point you in the right direction. So if you have any questions about any of this stuff, I'm wearing our outreach shirt. Kaylee in the back is wearing a shirt very similar to this. So we would invite you to come and talk to us. We'd love to resource you in any way that we can and, and have you, help you to take uh, a step forward as we celebrate the Every Knee Initiative. And I'm gonna have Matt come back up here and continue our celebration. All right. I do wanna do all of that, actually. <laughs> I don't know if I can do all of it, but man, thank you, Ryan. That was awesome. Okay, well, this is, as y'all know, our Celebration Sunday. And so I wanna talk for just a few minutes about uh, some of the results and what God has done thus far through our Every Knee Initiative. So I wanna talk about, again, our goals for the Every Knee Initiative and then lay out a little bit of what we have seen over the last couple of months. And then I wanna talk about sort of where we're going to head from here as we move forward. So let me uh, mention a couple of things. You'll remember our primary goal at the very beginning of the Every Knee Initiative was, and we called it at one point, 100% engagement. That is each of us and all of us together experiencing the joy of generously giving all that we have and all that we are to Jesus. Now, to, to say, okay, we're gonna measure 100% engagement, is a, it's a little hard to measure, but let me give you just some statistics that we've seen over the last couple of months related to the Every Knee Initiative, okay? First of all, we have had 800 first-time givers to Grace Bible Church. Uh, 800 first-time givers. So uh, that's maybe two and a half times the number of people sitting in this room right now, maybe three times the number of people sitting in this room right now. People who previously were not giving to the church, but now are giving to the church, who through this initiative said, I want to participate in what Grace Bible Church is doing in the future. So that's huge. That's definitely worth celebrating. Secondly, um, our junior high and high school students 
committed $58,400 to the Every Knee Initiative. That's, that's our kids, junior high and high school students who uh, got together. And I have a junior higher, and it's been just such a joy to see how the Lord has even worked in her life over the course of this last couple of months. So that's to me awesome that our kids decided we wanna be a part of this. We are all in. Um, We've also found many in our congregation either doubled or tripled their giving levels. And in fact, uh, I was looking at some of the statistics earlier this week. A lot of people doubled and tripled their giving. Uh, There were some in the congregation that increased their giving by factors of four or factors of five over what they were previously giving to Grace Bible Church. So uh, in terms of our congregation stepping forward, remember I I mentioned at the beginning of this process that this whole process is in large part an opportunity for us to hear from the congregation, to say, are we on board with what we think God is wanting to do through us as a church? And uh, what we've seen is the answer to that has been an overwhelming yes. Now, I know that many of you, you're like, okay, but what's the number you've been waiting for for the entire uh, time? So uh, let, me, let me just give you a little bit of perspective as we begin. If you remember, our yearly budget uh, moving forward averages out to about $6 million per year, right? So over the next two years, that would be $12 million, which would be our baseline. So I, I can't remember the exact number per year, but you know, it goes up each year. So it's somewhere like 5.8 and 6.2. So it kind of evens out to about $6 million per year. So $12 million. So the question is, what has our congregation, what has the Lord provided uh, in total? So the $12 million plus what additionally has been committed. Let me uh, see if I can get that in. Anim- Oops, it did not go. Can we go back? Ryan, can you see if you can get that animation to go forward? It's a very climactic moment. (laughs) And it's failing me. See if we can get, there we go, okay. So above and beyond our $12 million budget, we have committed an additional $10 million to the Every Knee Initiative. So that's huge cause for celebration, absolutely. Yes, you can applaud, celebrate. Okay, so huge cause for celebration. Now, let me say this. You guys, of course, know that that our secondary goal was a total of $32 million. So for some of you, let me me put this in perspective because I know that some of you may be going, okay, well, I feel a little bit discouraged or whatever. Do not. Okay, here's why. Here's why. This is unbelievably good news. And here's here's how I I want us to understand this this morning. First of all, this is more uh, money than our congregation at Grace Bible Church has ever committed to any initiative, right? So uh, we have, we've just been through a two-month uh, initiative. Let me remind you, when we launched the Creekside Campus, some of you will remember how much we raised to launch the Creekside Campus. It was right at $250,000, okay? Took us about four months to raise the $250,000 that we needed just to be able to do this, all right? Over the course of the last about eight weeks, our congregation has committed an additional $10 million toward the Every Knee Initiative, all right? Now, now ultimately, our, our goal is still the $32 million. Let me, let me explain then where this puts us. A couple of comments. This is a two-year initiative still. You'll remember it's a two-year initiative. Even though we're not preaching on this initiative every week over the course of the two years, we are continuing to push forward. In fact, every single day over the last four weeks, we have continued to get additional commitment cards from people from former students. In fact, I came up to the office yesterday and was talking with Brian Fisher over at our Anderson campus, and he had a card on his desk from a former student saying, I'm all in. He hadn't put in the number yet, but said, I wanna commit. I know that there are some of you in this room that you say, I'm all in. I'm still planning to commit across the state, across the world, literally every day, we're still seeing commitment cards come in. So the initiative is not over by any means. Now, now the other thing that we talked about was if the number were to come in initially a little bit below that 32 million mark, we would be praying and thinking about how to proceed. So let me, let me make a couple of comments with regard to that. We feel absolutely confident from what we have heard from the congregation 
that we can confidently and responsibly move forward with the construction of the Creekside facility. So remember the Creekside facility was roughly going to be about $16 million in total to build it. Okay, we have 10 million of the 16 million currently committed and we're continuing to receive commitments, right? So what does this mean? This means that we are going to proceed with the construction. It probably will take us just a little bit longer than uh, the two years to pay it off. But keep in mind that when we build Southwood, again, we took out a note for Southwood. We've already paid that off or down, excuse me, well ahead of the proposed schedule. That's always been the case with Grace Bible Church. We anticipate that being the case with the Creekside facility. Current plan is that construction will begin in around September. And ideally, we will be sitting in a facility at the end of 2019. So that's about 18 months from now. Yeah, I heard a little whoop. That is also cause for celebration. You guys can <laughs> celebrate and applaud that. Um, we had some other goals attached to this $32 million. If you remember, there were $2 million for a future campus, a fourth campus, and another $2 million for a couple of church plants. Uh, our elders are gonna be getting together and they're gonna talk about what does the timing and the planning look like for those portions of the goal as we look at where we are now, all right? So again, the idea is not that we are not going to continue to push forward with church planning and additional campuses. As long as Grace Bible Church seeks to preach the gospel here and around the world, we're still gonna be doing that. The timing is somewhat dependent upon the financial resources that come in, all right? So the adjustment at this point is primarily gonna be timing Related. All right, but again, this is unbelievably good news. I really do uh, want to emphasize this is cause for celebration. All right, so we're thrilled about what the Lord has done. Uh, we believe that, you know, that the stories that we've heard over the course of the last couple of months have been powerful stories of people choosing to take the next step in their walk with Christ and in their approach to their giving and their financial resources. Um, I wish I had time to go into more of the stories this morning. But uh, what, what we wanna do uh, in a few minutes, we're gonna have our time of offering. This is the beginning Sunday of the Every Knee Fulfillment Period. So that means that whatever you committed over the course of the next couple of years, that's when you will fulfill that commitment starting today. So this will be our first Every Knee Initiative offering. Before we take the offering, uh, there's a, a short video that I want us to see. We interviewed some men and women in the congregation on Commitment Sunday about how their lives were impacted through the Every Knee Initiative. And so I wanna watch that. After that, we will take the offering and then close out in worship.